Hi, this is Mary from SVG Cuts, and I hope you're as excited about this new Christmas home decor stuff as I am. It's going to be really fun to decorate around the house and to make as gifts to give people for the holidays. So the most notable part of this kit must be our new pitcher shaped vase with these really pretty three-dimensional amaryllis flowers. And I've got all my pieces cut out to show you exactly how the flowers go together and all the little extra things that I did to make them look extra special, as well as our pitcher shaped vase. So we've also got this really cool shadow box family tree project here too. And you could also make it just as a plain scrapbook page and put it in your 12 by 12 scrapbook. So obviously this would be really cool to make for your own family or to make it for someone else as a really special gift. And the cool thing about cutting out the photos for this is that your machine does the cutting for you. So you just use these different photo templates here, which your machine cuts out, and then you figure exactly where you want it on your photo, and then you let your machine do the cutting for you. So to see a step-by-step -step video on how that works exactly, you can click over here to see more about that. So we also have our three little mini luminaries, which are kind of reminiscent of the larger luminaria that people put out outside for the holidays with candles inside. And of course, I would only recommend putting an electronic battery-operated candle inside, or you could also use it as just a cute little gift bag for the holidays. So there's three different designs, and they all use vellum so that you can see your little candle shining through, which is super cute. And they're really easy because each box is just one piece, except for the embellishments on it. So we also have a really pretty card here, which uses the same style of tree that we had in our, our shadow box over here. And in your download, you also get the full tree. So if you want to use a whole entire tree on any other kind of project, you totally can. So the paper that I used this time is so pretty. And the first time I saw it was at the CHA trade show here in Chicago. And it's by a company called Cartabella. And I just love it because it's so elegant. And it uses like a, a mulberry red and a forest green in the color palette, which I think just makes it super elegant and super pretty. And another nice thing about it is it's really textured and really thick, so it feels really nice and it cuts really well and it's nice and sturdy for your projects. So I also used their smaller 6x6 pad here, which came in handy for some of the smaller shapes that I cut out. But like I always say, any other kind of Christmas paper that you have is going to look super cool with your project. I also got the, the brads that come with it, and they were really fun to use on this pretty little tree card. And I also used some really cute little buttons from our friend Tamara, who has buttons at her shop online called Paper Play Studio. So those are these, these large flare buttons that you see here. They're totally cute. So I have all my pieces cut out to show you the three-dimensional projects, so let's get started. So first let's do the easiest part of this project and take a look at our little mini luminary. So we have the box body here, and the first thing you want to do is flip it over and glue down your vellum on the inside. So all you're going to do is just go around the shape, doesn't have to be perfect, and just stick your vellum on. So then next you can go ahead and put your frame piece around here, which is this dark red shape. And then to close up your box, it's super simple. We're just going to put glue on this, this side tab here. And go ahead and wrap it around. And I forgot to mention earlier that one other cool thing about these little mini luminary boxes is that they have score lines on the sides and on the back so that you can fold them flat and store them for next year. Or if you give it to someone as a gift or as a gift bag, then they can store it flat and they can use it maybe as decoration or to give away, you know, give to someone else with a gift in it. So I just put glue on these three tabs here and I just 
close it up and that is it. Now all that's left to do is wrap this top part around and it's scored on all the places where it folds so it's real easy to just stick it on the top. So next for our 3D amaryllis flower, I am going to show you how I do this dowel part here. So this is a 7 16th width, that's how wide across it is, and they're labeled at the craft store. So if you're going to make five of them like I did, at the same length that I did, you're going to want to buy two of these dowels. So what we want to do is cut five of them to seven to eight inches long. You can cut them all seven or cut them all at eight, but I think it looks nice and more natural if you vary the length that you cut them at. So I'm going to take my little craft saw, and they sell these by the dowels, and I think with a Michaels coupon, it works out to about five bucks for this little saw. So I want to measure it to about seven and a half, and then I will just cut it. And it only takes like 10 seconds, but you get the idea. Then once it's cut, you want to paint it a nice dark green color. And the reason that I picked this dark green is because it most closely matched this green florist tape, which we're going to put on top of it later. So go ahead and paint your dowel. So now for the blossom of our amaryllis, we have two pieces like this. We've got six little gold pieces and then six petals that look like this. So what we want to do first, if you're going to emboss your petals, which I did for mine because I think it looks nice to add some texture and I think it looks a little more realistic and natural. So I'm putting it in a cuddle bug embossing folder. It's called Distressed Stripes and I'm putting it in my Big Shot embossing machine here and I will just crank it on through and actually two, two at a time fit in there but I will just do one for now. So now I've got all of my petals embossed and I would like to fold them all so that they look like this. And you can either fold it just like this on the end or I think if you take your dowel, it makes a nice round shape there at the end. And then you just pinch it in the middle and you can leave the end flat. So I've got all six of them looking like this and Something else that I thought added a nice touch was that I put glitter on the edge of each petal. So there's multiple ways to achieve glitter on the edge of something. So I thought this time I would try something new and I got my clear embossing ink pad. So em embossing with ink means that basically this one's clear so you can't really see it as I put it on here but embossing powder will stick to it. So I've got some red, red embossing powder here. It's by Stampendous and I picked it up at Archivers. So I'm going to just pour some all over the place, glitter party, yay. So and now I can tap it off. And I went a little heavy, but it's fine, it looks cool. So now, to set this glitter, I'm going to get my embossing heat gun. So now to set my embossing powder, which will make it like permanent, I'm going to use this heat tool here, which I've seen at pretty much every craft store. So I just turn it on, and I hold it over the glittered parts, and it just makes it kind of hard and permanent. So now, if you don't want to go through all those steps that I just did and you'd rather just use stickles or glue and glitter, that would totally be awesome too. I just thought I would get a little crazy. Alright, so we've got six petals here and our two pieces like this. So what we want to do is take your six little pieces here and fold them over and glue them onto the end of all six of these little pieces. Then you can take your dowel, which you've already painted green, but mine is clearly still wood colored. And I'm just going to put some glue 
on this rectangle and I'm going to wrap it around and it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to cover it up at the end with florist tape. So as long as it's basically held on there, that's good enough. So go ahead and put glue on your other piece and something nice to do is to overlap them. So see how I'm placing this one in between? I'm not putting it right on top of these are kind of alternated here going around. So just wrap that around again. And mine's not perfect at all, so no pressure to be scientifically perfect. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is put our petals on. And I just want a nice line of glue, about an inch long on the bottom. And I'm going to line it up like this. Now you can see there's maybe about a centimeter or a third of an inch between the tops of these two pieces. And I'm going to take three at a time going around. I want them spaced out evenly. And I'll do the third one. And then once these are in place, we're going to put the other three on, but we're going to kind of stagger them and alternate them between the existing petals here. So as you can see, I've got one, two, three, and I want to glue my next one in between the existing ones. So I will just do the same thing with the last two petals. I'm putting it in between And I'm kind of gluing it a little bit further down. That's fine, or at the same level is fine. And I'll, I'll just finish up by putting that one right there. So now, the top of my dowel is about here. So I want to take my florist tape and start at about that spot. And it's called tape, but it's not super sticky unless you stretch it. So you absolutely have to stretch it while you are wrapping it around. Otherwise it won't it won't hold. It'll just unravel and come off. And it's like a, a waxy sticky substance that is sticky. So I've made my way down about an inch and a quarter maybe and now I'm going to work my way back up and I want to be sure that I'm stretching it. And then I'll just tear it off. And I'm just going to twist it while I squeeze it to make it like set and really stick. So now I can kind of arrange my petals a little bit and pull them out. And then if you're going to make all five of them like I did, I think it looks really nice if you use five or you know two or three or four different shades of red so I've actually got like a dark red like a pale red and then like a really vibrant red I think it looks really nice all together so next for our three-dimensional picture here there are two main pieces and there is this part which is the bottom and then we've got two pieces for the handle and four brads to put that on with then there are eight little pieces here, which are going to go on at the very end, and they go on the inside to finish it off and make it look nice. Otherwise, you would see all kinds of tabs in there. Then finally, we have eight pieces like this, which are also going to go on at the end, and they make it look nice and smooth on the sides. So first, let's take our two main pieces here. and. All we're going to do is grab either one of them, doesn't matter which one, and we're just going to start gluing tabs together here by just putting glue on one of them and gluing it to its neighbor, doing your best to line up the edge of the paper with the folded part here. 
So I'll do that to the, both of these tabs on the bottom here. And then I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the top. And if you want to take a little short, you can skip this first one that I just put glue on because it will not really matter if it has glue on it or not. So all I'm going to do is the same thing again, just gluing each tab to its neighbor one at a time, giving it a chance to dry before I move on to the next tab above it. So just go ahead and do the same thing all the way down your shape. So my shape is all glued together and I went ahead and did the same exact thing to the other piece too. So now all that's left to do is do the same thing basically again by gluing all these tabs on one shape to the other. And it doesn't matter which one I start with because either way same pieces are going in the same places. So I will just put a nice thin even layer of glue on all of these tabs and then I'm going to start by putting either the top or the bottom in place either way does not really matter and I'm just going to work my way down so again I'm just holding it giving it a couple chance, a couple seconds to dry, give it a chance to dry. And it really kind of falls into place. Once one of the tabs is in place, the next one kind of starts to go in the right direction. I'm going to jump down to the bottom here and glue the bottom and work my way up to the middle. and these tabs in the middle just fell right into place. Okay, so go ahead and do the same thing on the other side to close up your pitcher. Just put glue on all these tabs and work your way down one tab at a time. Okay, so our pitcher is starting to take shape here and you might be tempted to go ahead and glue the bottom onto the bottom, but not yet. First, we want to put our panels onto our pitcher. So most of these panels are identical except for four of them which are different. So let's pull out two of them have holes in them and two of them are angled at the top. So let's set those aside and the remaining four here are all the same. So since my paper that I'm using has a white edge I would take my brown ink pad and rub it around the edge, which is going to make the whole thing look nicer. And then all we're going to do here is, as we can see, there's two holes here and two holes here. So those are going to be these panels with the holes in them. And the spout of the pitcher here is angled, so that's our two angled panels. So I'm going to take one of my regular panels here and put it on one of these regular sides. It doesn't matter what order you go in here, just as long as you get the right ones in the right place. So I'm going to put glue on the top of this piece and also on the bottom like half inch or so. So everything above the folds has glue on it. So. I'm going to place my panel in place here and I'm getting glue all over the place but as long as you get the idea that's all that matters for now and then I will wrap it around and I'm holding it down here and I just want to hold it for a couple seconds and give it a good chance to dry. Since it's curved it wants to pop off so you want to make sure that you let it dry. So the same principle applies to this other tab here. So let's go ahead and put glue on our tab, or I mean our, our panel here, that has 
the holes in it. And it's, it's obvious where it goes here. I'm lining up the holes at the top. And on this panel, I did not rub my brown ink pad around it. And you can see that white edge there. It doesn't look as polished. So I will just hold it at the top and at the bottom and give it a chance to dry. So let's say that we put all of our panels on our pitcher. Then we can go ahead and move on to our handle, which is two pieces. And there's a little score line on both ends of it. So I can go ahead and score these pieces. And I want to glue it together on this main flat part here. So I'll put a nice little even layer of glue and glue one to the other. Now I can take my four brads and put my pitcher together with the handle and I'm just going to stick a brad in this hole and open it up from the inside and I'll go ahead and I'll do that to the other three holes on the pitcher assuming that this panel is already in place. So once all your panels and your handles in place you can go ahead and put glue on these bottom tabs here and you can be a little more careful and precise with your glue than I'm being right now. But obviously it just goes right onto the bottom like this. So now to finish off the inside top part of our pitcher, since we can see all these little pointy tabs everywhere, it looks kind of crazy. So we've got eight pieces that go on the inside. Now two of them are slanted at the top and those are going to go at the pointy part of our pitcher here. And then the other six of them are identical and they're going to go all the way around just like this. And you just glue them right in place. So then the other six of them are identical just like this and they are just going to get glued right into the inside of your pitcher. So for my finished pitcher here, I added this really cute little charm and I used this Epiphany Crafts Shape Studio tool which you can get at Michael's and I've seen them sometimes at Archivers. So that's really fun. I used the same coordinating paper to make this little shape. And then to weight down the inside of my pitcher, in the florist section of Michael's I got these little glass round things and I just put them on the inside. But really anything that's kind of heavy and non-perishable is going to be awesome. So there you have it, really fun, really pretty, elegant Christmas projects for your house or for someone special's house. So if you make any of these projects, I would love to see them on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog or Instagram or wherever you'd like to share them. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.